This one's about loyalty. That's what this video is about, loyalty. Now, what happened is, look at the lump on this man's head. You know, this brother's name is No Love. That's finesse two times baby brother. I want y'all to understand that because I got a brother. I was the baby, but I was the more wilder one and the more on the street. So therefore, everybody thought I was the oldest and I carried it as such because I was raised in a little bit more traumatic situation than my brother. But I got nothing but love for my brother. Look at the lump on this man's head. This is finesse two times brother. His brother got a lump on the head from the hands of finesse two times bodyguards, entourage, homies, whatever you want to call it. Because as came out of No Love's mouth, finesse two times brother that's on the screen for those of y'all don't know. So I'm going to try and walk you through it to bring y'all up to it because a lot of y'all don't even pay attention to this. But I pay attention to this because this is showing me what's happening in our community and what needs to be fixed. So right now, the number one cause of problems in our community is mental health issues. It's already been stated by no love on the screen with the lump on his head and finesse two times his older brother that his younger brother, no love, that's on the screen has mental health issues and anger issues. And you could tell he's very emotional because when Honeycomb Brazy came out and attacked his brother, No Love quickly went to the YouTube and tried to defend his brother. He went too far. Yes, I'm going to say it. I'm going to interject my opinion to that. I feel he went too far. And let me ask y'all, do y'all feel he went too far? He went up there wearing a mob ties chain and saying that he was going to smack Honeycomb Brazy and, you know, Spoke on Honeycomb Brazy's dead grandparents. Like grandma said, spank him on his ass. He out there playing. I'm gone, he's still playing. Spank him on his ass. You know, and I feel that that's a total violation. And all that going on about, you know, disrespecting the dead, I don't agree with that because even the Morris Science Temple says that when we're born and we have the a bit of a umbilical cord and you know how they cut the umbilical cord you know when the baby is born but the more science temple believe that when we're born that we have a umbilical cord connected to us that keeps us connected to the universe if you could picture all these little you know umbilical cords going together as one and that's what keep us in the universe now this man sat here, right, and allowed his brother, no love, to be jumped by his team because he wanted his brother to leave, as his brother said, and his brother did not want to leave. His brother aired out other grievances and gripes that he had with his brother because he was angry, you know, and he was hurt, rightfully so, from getting this ugly lump on his head at the hands of his brother's team when all he wanted was a fair one. If you feel I violated, give me a DP, as they call it in the gang world, you know? Give me a DP, you know? Give me a one-on-one, -on -one, you know? Discipline me, you know? Let me get at, you know, whoever you want me to get at. And Finesse chose not to do that and had them jump his own brother Finesse, that's a violation. I don't want to change your name, you know, because I'm trying to respect you. But as I'm watching how you handling this, I'm not I'm not satisfied and I'm not comfortable with the way you're doing this, you know, because one, Honeycomb Brazy held you down while you was in jail for five years, sent you money. Honeycomb Brazy got you out of a life threatening situation when, you know, you felt your life was in danger in Memphis after young Dolph got killed and hooked you up with Jay Prince to make sure you was all right. Honeycomb Brazy also played your music for music executives and told Jay Prince to sign you, allegedly, you know? Now, you need to speak on these allegations of loyalty because with a name like Finesse Two Times, you know what I mean? You're moving in the street world 
as grimy. That's what's co that's considered as grimy. A man, you know, does all that for you, send your money while you locked up. He had a chance to, you know, Honeycomb Brazy had a chance to sign, you know, with money bag yo. You know, you told him not to when you was in jail. He didn't. You came out of jail. You went and signed with him. You blew up. Now, Honeycomb Brazy come out and you feel that you don't owe him anything. No, it's not about you owing him anything. It's called self-respect and self-loyalty. You know what I mean? Because if you have loyalty for yourself and respect for yourself, you would want others to be loyal and respectful to you as you would want them to be to you the same as Honeycomb Brazy was loyal to you when he plugged you in and held you down while you was in prison. Now, when that happens, your little brother with the mental health issues that you stated he had and he stated he had and anger issues, he goes on YouTube to defend you and, you know, y'all tell me in the comments, do you feel he crossed the line, you know? When? Because y'all might not know. So what happened is No Love goes up on the YouTube and he says that uh, he speaks on Honeycomb Brazy's grandparents that, you know, was transformed. Stay you know. away, fool. But when a nigga see you, fool, nigga gonna do it for grandma, fool. Nigga gonna whoop your ass, fool. I stamped it, fool, on a fire, fool. Nigga gonna beat your ass, fool. Real talk. See, I really been trying to be cool. I'm finna break out retirement, you hear me? Cause these whole ass niggas still playing. I'm talking about way back understanding they were playing. You hear me? Yeah, it's time to show these niggas. It's time to show these niggas, man. I ain't finna do too much talking, man. I said what I had to say. On God, bro, I'ma do it for grandma. On God, that what she'll say. Whoop his ass, baby. Whoop his ass. Man, this is sad, man. This is sad. This young man's grandparents was burnt to death by the alleged bullet from a gun from one of his comrades that his grandmama even fed and raised because they grew up like that. But then uh, a murder happened, you know, to one of uh, Honeycomb Brazy's comrades and his other comrades that was loyal to the brother that lost his life, they came back for retribution and they shot up Honeycomb Brazy's mama's house, allegedly, and hit an oxygen tank that the grandmama was on and it blew up and they died in a fiery fire and then no love goes up there and he speaks on that and make fun of this man that lost his loved ones, his grandparents that raised him because his daddy's in jail. Now, why would you do that? Do y'all feel he crossed the line when he did that? Put that in the comments, you know? Or do you feel that anything goes because they're beefing, you know? Put it in the comments and let me know how you feel. Now, Finesse two times, brother, you know, and Finesse had issues. Now, Finesse has his brother jumped. His brother goes on social media and does an Instagram live when the mob ties chain that, you know, was given to, you know, either him or Finesse. We don't know, you know, but he's wearing a mob ties chain and he's defending his brother to the T. And he spoke on Honeycomb Brazy's grandparents that got killed. And then he spoke on smacking Honeycomb Brazy when Finesse two times didn't say a word. That shows reckless loyalty. That's what you call that. See, I give you all these jewels. That's reckless loyalty. You know, it's reckless because, you know, you're speaking on someone's dead parents and then you're talking about smacking someone, you know, that uh, knowing about it, about it, young man, that could lead to the demise of someone. And that's what I'm trying to prevent by making this video talking about this topic and the mental disorder that's in our community when i was growing up and it looks like it still haven't changed here it is 50 years later when a young man has mental health issues in the hood we say that he's just wilding 
he's bugging. You know, this is how we speak on it. Now, when it happens in a white community, you know, they take him to go see a psychiatrist. They take him to go get mental health issues resolved. But we just say he's just wilding, like that's the norm. And then these children grow up to be adults and wind up in prison or killing someone or hurting someone. And this is what I'm trying to prevent right now today. Now, no love got this lump on his head. Look at that lump on his head. You know, this is finesse two times baby brother. I'm my brother's baby brother, you know, that got, you know, murdered. Rest in peace to my brother, Khalif, a.k.a. P. <laughs> All right, rest in peace. All right, relax, y'all. Relax, relax. So now, if that was my brother, Khalif, a.k.a. Peter, with a lump on his head that I did not put there, someone would be... I don't even have to say the word, you know, but you allowed them to do that. What you also allowed from what your brother, no love said, I'm just going from no loves video that y'all need to see. Now you had an Airbnb and you told your brother, your baby brother to sleep on the floor. So another man could sleep in the bed and you was putting your brother on the floor. Like what type of nigga you know let his niggas fight his own brother? Then I'm telling the nigga, get my one-on-one -on -one out here, man. My nigga wanna even fight me one-on-one, -on -one, man. All you nigga, big Jew, little Jew, cold, uh, cut, all you niggas some bitches, bro. Real talk, fool, I stamped that, fool. What type of nigga move in an Airbnb and move strangers in his hole? Give a stranger a bed for and tell your little brother you got to sleep on the floor. Man, you a bitch. Listen, when I was raised in Brooklyn back in the 70s, and we all came up from Jamaica, we all used to sleep on a mattress the size of a prison mattress, and there'd be seven men sleeping on that mattress. Everybody got a big dirty 9 millimeter, a uh, uh, 38, uh, uh, you know, a 357 Magnum. But seven men slept on that mattress. We didn't tell any one of our comrades, you have to sleep on the floor. And I know y'all are wondering how did seven men fit on a prison mattress? As long as our shoulders, you understand what I'm saying? And our heads and necks is on that mattress. You know what I mean? We're sleeping. Where our bodies is at, that's irrelevant. So everyone makes sure our heads are comfortable at the end of the night. And that's how we shared that one mattress. Now you have an Airbnb and you tell your baby brother to sleep on the floor. That's why he's angry. One of the reasons. Now, you allowed your baby brother to be jumped at the hands of your comrades. I'm going to get straight to it. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Me and bro had some words. You know what I'm saying? Some disagreements. You know what I'm saying? I'll let that be known later. And I'm going to upload the footage of what just happened. As you can see, I got a knot on my head. You hear me? Y'all shut it, John, bro. My, my own motherfucking brother, bro. My own motherfucking brother, bro. You hear me? And the reason behind this shit, I ain't going to even say it on live right here. I'm going to just let y'all know what happened, cuz. I got, come on, cuz. Man, that man let his own nigga jump me, cuz. What nigga you know let his own nigga jump him, bro? Come on, man. That shit ain't grateful. I ain't no more F and G with me. Man, don't, 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 don't say nothing to me about no finesse two time, no none of that shit, bro. I'm standing on it this time, bro. Real talk, bro. I tried to come back and show my love, show my loyalty. You know what I'm saying? Come on, bro. Just because I don't want to leave, bro. You tell these niggas put their hands on me, bro. Like I'm a bitch. Then he tell one of his niggas. I got all this shit on footage, bro. He tell one of his niggas, hey, cut. Go on, fight him, cut. Get what, I, get what cut say. I don't want the one-on-one -on -one with them, bro. I don't nigga jump me, bro. I ain't run me up, fool. Because you had an issue with him not wanting to leave. That's your baby brother. That's your responsibility. He's your duty. He's your mama's child came from the same womb, so you should, I'm going to say, forget should, you must protect 
your blood. Period. And now your brother has all these issues going on where he got this big ugly lump on his head and he's on social media airing out your business. No love, you know. What do y'all think in the comments? Do you think no love is wrong for going to social media, putting it out there like that, where now the world knows about the discord within the finesse two times family. I'm not even going to say camp. I'm going to say family because I'm dealing with him and his blood brother. I'm not dealing with his, you know, entourage. I'm dealing with his family. Do y'all feel that was wrong? Put that in the comments. Let's get some conversation and dialogue going on this. You know, two times, <laughs> two times that is that I mentioned. You know what I mean? Now, you know, no love is exposing what happening on the live. And like I said, tell me what you think of that, you know? Then Brazy goes and he makes a video and This man taking care of your family. You that what you say? He take care of business. He doing what he supposed to be doing. That what you told me, he doing what he supposed to be doing out here. He ain't out here. He take care of business. He got his whole family with him. He got his mama with him. So why are you on here trying to take all that away from that man? <clears throat> but you dead wrong, bro. Boy, yeah, that wrong, but I ain't gonna, you wrong as hell. You, you wrong, you a low down ass nigga, no love. You got the right name, but you low down as fuck. So now you get on some bitch ass shit when y'all fell out. Now you on some your brother now. Now fuck how your mama and them living and all that. Cause you know if your brother go down, your mama and them over with, they being real. I'm telling you what's going on. They dead, they gonna have to find, find something to do. I'm telling you some real shit. But, I don't care how mad I'm at a nigga. Don't fuck with a nigga. I'm not finna get on no internet and tell no nigga, man. You feel? I'm not finna get on no internet, no social media lie and tell on no nigga. Blood brother at that. Blood brother at that. You really only, you just told your goddamn brother. That nigga say he got footage and everything, bro. You got footage. Man, what, what footage you got? <laughs> this ain't got footage. <laughs> Man, how you get the footage? What, you might have somebody record or you had a camera on the house or something? Uh, you, I know where you get record. So you tell you get your ass beat up and you record at the same time? Boy, you're different. <laughs> Boy, you're the real police. <laughs> Boy, you, you is the real deal. I ain't fucking with you no love. I ain't let you tell on me. I ain't let you tell on me. I ain't gonna let you tell on me. You just told your goddamn blood brother on live. Look, man, I ain't even not that long. You put a guy with me, baby. You put a guy with brains, and nigga would hit a little different. He said, I'm a bitch. Damn, nigga, dog. That nigga had a body cam on it. <laughs> Boy, that other day, undefeated. Oh, my God. The nigga said the nigga had a body kit, and that and and all makes sense, bro. You know where, where you at, my nigga? You absolutely right. And he's looking on this, and he's considered as your ops. Now you got your ops seeing the inner turmoil and discord that's going on. That makes, you know, your camp look bad, and that falls on you as the general finesse two times not on your brother not on your soldiers not on your comrades not on your entourage it falls on you because you in charge of that camp i really feel that you know y'all need to tighten up like i said i put my number on the screen hoping that one of you young brothers that's out there watching this will see that i'm here for you i work for a group called grow up and grow out that's connected with credible messenger that takes men like me that's been in the bottom of the barrel and wasted our lives and you know put us in a position to talk to the youth as a credible messenger of the death and destruction that we cause that I'm going to again apologize for. I apologize for the death and destruction that, you know, was caused by my hands.
during the time when I was younger and knew no better, just like right now, No Love and Finesse Two Times and Honeycomb Brazy is young, and there's a lot of things that they don't know just as I didn't know and I made mistakes. I don't want anyone to hold me responsible for my youthful transgressions and issues, so I'm not going to, and I don't want y'all either to hold Finesse Two Times, Honeycomb Brazy, No Love, or any of these other, you know, men that's on YouTube that has issues that they're trying to learn and figure out how to work out because there wasn't an elder there. Well, I'm an elder. I'm here now. My number's on the screen. Y'all hashtag and at these people that I speak on to hopefully they see it. And, you know, they reach out and we could try and get our people together. Because like I did that video yesterday on P. Diddy and what's going on with his situation. Like I said, we have to stick together as a people. All other races are sticking together. Our race is eating our backs out where now you got brothers going on social media eating each other's brothers' backs out and putting their business out there. That's a big violation. Loyalty is like this. Let me break down loyalty. One of my comrades, you know, because I like to ride. Let's get it going. One of my comrades had an issue where they disrespected his family and threatened his family's life. And my comrade came to me to come get a gun but I knew my comrade wasn't cut like that. So I said, no, I will take care of it. Take me up there, you know. And I went up there and I handled it for my comrade because I was loyal to him. And I didn't want him to wind up in prison where I could have dealt with going to prison because I was already raised in and out of prison. And this young man was, you know, borderline civilian. But... I was trying to keep them from going on the other side of the line and keep them more civilian line. So I went up there and handled it. When you have an issue amongst the team, we do something back in the day that we call bringing it to the round table. Finesse two times. You need to hold a round table meeting so that y'all could get order and structure and understanding on how y'all going to move forward to continue to get the bag and blow your brand up. Bring it to the round table where you give everyone a chance to speak, you know, their gripes with the team and, you know, their love within the team. But y'all just need to talk as a family to hear what's in each other's hearts so that it don't have to be taken to social media because you're not allowing them to speak how they feel. That's called a round table. You see, I give y'all jewels. Follow me on Instagram. And you know, the Cash App is on the screen. Make sure you hit the logo and it says it was created in 2020, not 2023. Now, we have this going on. Finesse Two Times Brother went up on social media and admitted that he has mental health issues, that he has anger issues. Finesse, get your brother some help. Finesse. Get your brother in touch with me. Finesse, you get in touch with me. We need to tighten this up, man. We need to tighten this up. Because when someone do something for you, you're supposed to hold them down and give them the same level of loyalty, love, and respect as you would want for yourself. You don't allow someone else to put their hands on your blood brother. If anything, you put your hands on your brother and you discipline him from your hands because he came from your mama's womb that you came from and you're responsible for him. You know this young man has issues. You said he has issues. He said he had issues. Help this young man with his issues. Don't allow someone else to put their hands on him. Because if anyone, anyone in my team, anyone put their hands on my brother, Khalif, a.k.a. Peter, if anyone put their hands on him, it would be, I don't even need to say the word, you know, but I could do what I want to him. He fair game for me because anything I bring him from these hands would be out of love, honor, respect. And wanting 
him to survive and move forward in a righteous way. Y'all have to really get a grip on what's going on out there, man. Look at this young man's head. Your comrades did that. Your brother asked for a fair one. You wouldn't give him a fair one. He goes to social media and says all of this, and then he says, I have the videotape to prove it. Come on. What is really going on out there? We have to do better as a people. We don't throw each other under the bus and we don't put our business on social media. You don't see any other races doing this. So there's no reason for our race to do this. Where now you have, you know, your self-created opposition, Honeycomb Brazy, having ammunition to go up there to show the discord in your camp when you're supposed to show your camp tight. Look at how Honeycomb Brazy's camp is moving together as a unit. I seen Honeycomb Brazy get a box of chicken. A box of chicken. Look at about eight pieces in it. And he opened the box up and before he even took one, he offered a piece to all his comrades. That's called breaking bread, man. And that's why he has the Lord to have. Just like, you know, because I like to ride. Because I like to ride. Just like we have King Vaughn. They show when King Vaughn, Vaughn got his, I think it was $100,000, he go back in the, in the hood and he goes to his comrades and he pulls the money out and he gives them each a stack. Because the same way these brothers is sliding with him and sliding for him and showing him that they're willing to risk their life in time of danger and turmoil is the same way that when you find beef around the corner and you go back and tell your comrades, I got beef around the corner and your comrades go with you around the corner and you, you already know, you know, they air it out. You know what I mean? For you. You understand? And then now you get a record deal. Now you hit a stimulus check. Uh, even the females, you hit a ditty stimulus. <laughs> you know what I mean? Now, that's when you're supposed to break bread with them the same way you broke bread with the beef you break bread with the gain that you get. You, my mama told me this. You know, you already know I like to ride. You know, my mama, eighty-eight years old. She upstairs sleeping. I just checked in on her, gave her a kiss before I came down in the studio. Now, my mama told me this. You know, cause y'all mind it. Y'all gotta go back and look at my previous videos, man. I got almost a thousand videos up there. Everything got jewels like this. Don't just wait for a daily video. You could go back and look at other videos. Maybe I'm posting them too fast and, you know, I'm not giving y'all enough time to, you know, to let other people come in and look at it. So when new people hear about the channel, they come to the channel and they just watch what's happening today and they don't worry about the videos that was put up yesterday. But there's jewels in all of them. I spoke on this jewel before in one of my other videos. That's why I mentioned that and tried to let y'all know to go back and check out my previous videos. My lovely mama told me, I went out and we got in the beef. I got in the beef with, you know, uh, somebody around the corner. Well, my brother got in the beef. My brother was coming home and, you know, they went and tried to jump my brother. My brother comes home and he tells me about it and tell my mama about it. My mama said, take your ass out there and go, you know, handle that with your brother. You know, which I was going to do it anyway. But I go out and I go handle the business and I go get involved in my brother beef that he found around the corner. Then my brother is coming home and he goes across the railroad tracks and he found a paper bag with some money in it. He came home and he said, look at what I found. You know what I mean? Look at what I got. I got all this money. I found all this money. So when he did that, you know what I mean? My mother, my mother said, okay, what about your brother? He said, nah, he wasn't with me. This is my money. I found it. So my brother said, hold up, when you found that beef around the corner, <laughs> you came home to get your brother. So now that you went around the corner and found that bag of money, your ass better give your brother something. You don't just give him the beef and you don't want to give him none of the rewards, you know what I mean, that you get. Because it don't work that way in life. 
Those that's there for you in your time of need is the ones you're supposed to be there for in your time of gain, if you understand where I'm coming from. That's what my lovely mother told me. And that's the same thing that we're dealing with here. Finesse, you made the bag. Look out for those that was there for you. It seemed like your brother was even there for you while you was locked up the same way you even said in a video that I saw out your mouth when you did a live with Honeycomb Brazy that he was there for you and now you got the bag and it's all your uh, money. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's all yours, you know? But when you had the beef in Memphis, allegedly, and Honeycomb Brazy plugged you with Jay Prince, allegedly, you know? When Honeycomb Brazy was loyal to you and didn't sign with Moneybag Yo, you know, when he had the opportunity, allegedly, the same way Honeycomb Brazy played your music for the music execs, allegedly, the same way Honeycomb Brazy got you uh, a, a plug with Jay Prince, allegedly, you know, is the same way you're supposed to be there now that you got your blessing. Because when you was having your issues, Honeycomb Brazy was there. Your brother was there and whoever else was there. That's called loyalty. That's how we look out for each other. Don't get it twisted. We must stick together as a people and someone have to give you all these jewels. There's no reason for this man to be looking like this at the hands of one of your comrades. Because if somebody did that to my comrade, I'm going to put my hands on that person because nobody put their hands on my brother but me. Period. I don't care what my brother do. If my brother is wrong, he's right until I get him behind closed doors. I would never in public or nowadays in going in social media and speak about what my brother did. You know what I mean? Because that stays amongst us as a family. We handle our issues together. Like I said, we have the round table. Take it to the round table, brother. Finance, regroup. Go get a nice ballroom somewhere. You know, call all your comrades. Not a party where outsiders come, your comrades. You know what I mean? You don't have to be a big ball. Get a boardroom, you know, with a nice big table and y'all sit at the table and you sit at the head of the table and you ask everyone one at a time going around the problem, what do they think you are doing wrong? What would they like to be changed about the way you are running your camp? That would mean you have to listen to them. I mean, you have to do what they say, but at least listen to them. Communication is key. Finesse. Let's go. Slow it down. Slow it down. You know, my phone number is always on the screen. 917-680-9091. It's right there in front of you. I answer that phone. And my time is valuable. That's why I tell y'all when you call me, I don't care if it's a dollar. Send me something on the cash app because you just stopped me for what I'm doing, not even knowing you, to sit here and give you my time to help you with your issues in life or just to listen to your issues in life when I could be dealing with my own issues in my own life. But then, of course, you get the rat bastards flip-flop wearing and public trolls, you know, to say, oh, he's Reverend Ike. Call it what you wish. Because the game is to be sold, not told. And you lame, green, rat bastards that don't understand that, I'm going to give you three seconds to tap out. All right, and you already know. Take that with you on the way out. <laughs> you know what I mean? Make sure y'all cop the book of Rowan Harlem. Follow me on Instagram. And again, that's my cash app. Make sure you hit the logo and it says it's created in 2020, not 2023. Come on, man. Let's get some loyalty. Let's get this going. Put it in the comments what you think about everything that I said, even about the cash app, because I know we got the rat bastards. So let's weed them out so when they say something stupid, I could just block them and end it. I probably blocked over 40,000 rat bastards off my page. I would already been at 100,000, but I don't need the rat bastards because this is not for views. This channel is a gangster channel to show y'all how gangsters move 
to hopefully deter you from wanting to get involved in the streets and move in the manner of a street gangster and become a civilian gangster. Look how Washington had the politician gangsters. <laughs> you know what I mean? But even they have discord. Come on, man. Let's work together as a team, family. You know, let's work together as a team. Phone number is on the screen. I'm about to tap out because I got something to do. Let's go. All right? Cheers. 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 Toast the crime. Toast the crime. 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 Can of 26, yeah. he back on the strip, uh -huh. getting back in the mix. Yeah. What he mentions a gift. Trust. You stand up ten toes down, and I suggest you pay attention to this. Real. Take a little gully, posse, and put it in home. Uh -huh. He cut from the bottom, back. came up from the bottom. Back. Drop the book, you should go and get it. Go An get Instagram it. page and a YouTube, you could go and visit. Yeah. Then you could consider yourself LinkedIn. Real. Sit front row and get juice from a kingpin. Uh -huh. How he went through it, so you ain't gotta go do it. Uh -huh. Did not pay attention would be stupid. Talking about a man. That probably put your grandfather on Probably the reason that him and your grams got along A man that generated millions on the block Did his time, never squill until the cops make an audio Get, get it live like two G's in the 90s uh, Drop top beam her so shine uh, I let shorty go, she was wine Treat her like my past, she behind me what? Spend a couple bands on the dapper dan You be back again, getting green like a Packers fan No cap, it's a roaring uptown They be horn uptown, Dominican bust downs Now we on the positive, you we got a lot to give Now he trying to stop the kids from being inoperative So take heed, homie, lend the air He started in uptown, he gon' finish there but now it ain't about selling drugs, buying cars It's about buying property to make the community yard So we can give back to the youth them Cause they the truth them And bless up to all the rude men